Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three here by Take TV. And I'm doing this alone because the players are eating right now. They are hungry. It's for them. Well, it's it's 4 p.m. But for them, it's early in the morning because we do have some late night action here. And after the tournaments, the players still hang out. They talk, they drink, they play poker. And yeah, that's why nobody wants to cast right now. But I am here to bring you the action. And we got an absolute cracker of a match coming up for you. It is going to be Nimsch from Poland against Ignite from Portugal. So that's absolutely going to be cool. It's uh, the second group stage. It's now uh, the round of 16 here. And we have already seen in this group B Lothar play against Powder. And Lothar won that with a very nice 3-2 uh, victory so the second match uh, uh, the second game of the match is now Nimsch against uh, Ignite and we are just about to jump in There we go. Nimsch decided to start out with the Hunter and he's going up against Ignite's Mage. We have seen some crazy action, action on the mainstream yesterday. Ignite actually managed to win with his with his Freeze Mage against a Warrior. So uh, very much skill involved there and uh, a bit lucky with a Brawl, I heard. But Ignite definitely won of, yeah, a, a very good player in this tournament and Nimsch will definitely have to to think about his turns and to really take his time and to really not make any mistakes and to focus on the game. We have a nice starting hand though here for Nim. She is a face hunter as it looks with the abusive sergeant. And we do have an animal companion here, Mad Scientist. It's a nice start. You could also think about keeping the Iron Beak Owl because it's maybe you expect some taunts or something. I don't know if Nimsch knows that Ignite is bringing the, f the Freeze Mage here, but I guess so. Hello. Um, anyway, with the coin now, you have a nice start. Coin into Knife Juggler even if you want to, because putting on the pressure is always nice for the Hunter, as everybody knows. And Ignite, on the other hand, we see him with the anti Q, but he also has the Mad Scientist for him available here, so that's a nice counter to that, to that Knife Juggler. Nimsch draws into a quick shot, and there's something interesting about the lineups of the players. So Nimsch brought a druid, a hunter, a, a mage and a warrior, and because Ignite plays the freeze mage, he banned the warrior to, yeah, to not get into that bad matchup here for him. Ignite, on the other hand, brought a, a paladin, a warrior and a mage and a priest, and a very interesting ban here by Nimsch, he banned the priest. So maybe... I. I don't really know about Nim's lineup yet. Maybe he's playing it a bit aggressive. Maybe that mage is also mech mage, so you don't want to to run into an anti aggro priest. Uh, that might be that might be why we see the priest being banned here by Ignite, and that's also a very nice choice to bring a priest to the tournament. Nim's plays his mad scientist as well, swings to the face, and yeah, it's Ignite's turn again. I expect him to trade his Mad Scientist into the Knife Juggler, which see just that, and then he can go for the Acolyte of Pain. The secret that comes on the board is an Ice Barrier that's nice for the early game. It triggers, and then still you have for the late game, you have your Ice Blocks available. So that's not too bad here. Nimsch on turn 3, he could go for the Animal Companion if he wanted to. Uh, I guess everything would be fine here. Getting a Huffer is always nice. Getting a Misha. Mm. I guess you don't really want a Misha here. Because then Ignite can just ping his Echo out of Pain and just draw another card. So Leok is also good because it buffs up your Mad Scientist. And you can prevent Ignite from drawing another card out of that Mad Scientist. And there we go. He gets the Leok. Trades his Mad Scientist in. And the good thing here is now... If Ignite wants to get rid of the Mad Scientist, he has to ping it. So that would be a waste of two mana. He could not play his Arcane Intellect this turn. And usually you want to draw more cards. But we see Ignite going for the Fire Blast here and then for the Doomsayer. He has two, two Doomsayers in his hand. So that's a nice choice here to, yeah, to clear that Leok. Nimsh, on the other hand, he has one Explosive Trap in the hand. Wow, but he plays a Snake Trap, so uh, that's nice. He could go for Explosive Trap and just Steady Shot this turn, run the Leok to the face, and just pass. 
there's there's no sense in playing kill command or unleash the hounds here so i guess that's the safe play but anyway nimsh can take his time here he can think about okay what can ignite do next turn and how is the game gonna develop because that's what what makes professional players professional players that you think about further turns that you really take your time and have a game plan and you all you plan it all through but there we go, as expected, a steady shot into Explosive Trap, and now the Doomsayer is gonna wreck the whole board. The Leok is going to die with him, and Ignite will now easily go into his Arcane Intellect, can draw another card, and will put the Blood Mage Thalnos on the board. It's uncontested on the board, you can use it maybe to, well, if you even want to trigger that Explosive Trap. You don't have to in this matchup, because you're dealing your damage by, by spell damage, so you never have to attack, actually. But that's very nice here. Nimsh draws into the Wolf Rider, and that's exactly what he needed. So if Ignite is a bit greedy here and runs his uh, his Blood Mage Thanos into that Wolf Rider, we will see the Snake Trap trigger. And by drawing into that Emperor Thorisan that you would love to play on turn 6 here, by drawing into that, uh, you could think about trading into the Wolf Rider. So Ignite definitely has to make a choice here. If he wants, if he wants to do that trade, or if he just wants to ping that and delay his his Emperor Thorisan. I wonder. And that's a difficult turn for Ignite. He. As I said, uh, you don't want your Thorison to be delayed. But you also don't want to trigger the Snake Trap, so... And yeah, he, he goes with the Emperor of, uh, with the Blood Mage Thalnos to the face, plays the Doomsayer even to deny Nimsh playing some some minions. And yeah, that's that's actually a nice turn here. He triggers the explosive trap, he clears the wolf rider, and then goes for for the doomsayer. Just a black doomsayer on the board to deny some pressure. And now a nice turn here for Ignite Emperor Thorosan hitting on seven cards in Ignite's hand. So it's it's really going well here. Nimsh, on the other hand, he has still a lot of burst available with that quick shot double kill command. So the game might still change because he also does not have an ice block ready here. Ignite really needs that ice block for the late game. But for now, he he can stay alive. Oh, and there is the ice block, but he can easily stay alive. Could also go to the face with the Emperor Thorison. Now he knows it's a snake trap. Just heal up anti keelbot. Even freeze the board if you want to. Wow, that's that's a great position here, I would say. That's a very good position for Ignite. The Acolyte of Pain. Even though Unleash the Hounds is getting delicious here, you hit it on three minions against Wow, even Leroy. It's nice. That's very nice here. And you also have the Knife Juggler on the board for some additional juggles. Mm -hmm. So you could go for the combo Leroy Jenkins Unleash the Hounds if you wanted to. Mm, is there another way to play this out? I, I totally expect to see Unleash the Hounds this turn because against the Freeze Mage, like three minions is the optimal outcome for Unleash the Hounds. Against the Freeze Mage, you can't really expect to get more value out of that. Hmm. And there we go! We see Leroy Jenkins being played. One juggle hits the. Hits the Echolite of Pain, unfortunately. But we, 
Nimsch swings to the face, goes for five hounds, and let's see those crazy knife juggles. Oh no, he can just go for four hounds because seven minions is the maximum on the board. He hits the, again on the Acolyte of Pain, and was he running out of time, or was he able to attack with all his hounds? That's the question. It looks like it all went through, he went full phase mode here, but Ignite got some options in his hand. He has a Fireball available, he has a Frostbolt, Emperor Thorson is still in this hand. We do see Alex Straza coming in for 7 mana. Wow, and, and that's crazy because you can play Fireball. Wow, that's lethal! That's total lethal here, Ignite has lethal damage on the board. With the Fireball for 2 mana coming in, so Emperor Thorson did his work. And that's the 1-0 here for Ignite with his Freeze Mage winning over Nimsh. And what a nice game here. I heard about Ignite's freeze mage, but that was really impressive. How he won against that face hunter, I really enjoyed that game. <laughs> I guess we all want face hunter to lose because, well, everybody hates face hunter, am I right? <laughs> and yeah, very nicely played here. And really, I did not see any mistakes here by Ignite. He's really taking his time and he's on a hot streak right here. Advancing in his group in group stage one, he was advancing 6 1, and now he's continuing his march here. That's uh, very, very nice here. So, next up, uh, the mage is gone for Ignite, so he has Paladin and Voria left, uh, going up against a druid mage and hunter by Nimsh. Um, you could expect Ignite to play the Voria here. Well, but you don't want to, to run into a mech match. That's the thing, that's the question. Does an image play a mech match? You don't want to run into a druid, and you don't want to run into a mech match. So maybe you go for a paladin. We will see. We are joining uh, the next game. It's game number two of this best of five series. And Ignite chose the paladin, and he runs into Nimish's hunter once more. But we already see Ignite is prepared here. He has the zombie chow, so that's something to drop early in the game and to deny some some aggression by the hunter. Nimsh, on the other hand, he has Knife Juggler, he has the Haunted Creeper. He did choose to redraw the Glaive Zuka here. He did get a second knife juggler, wow. That's, that's really delicious here. And now Ignite also drawing into the shielded minibot, so a lot of early game answers here. Nimsh has to go for the Haunted Creeper. Nice follow up with the Abusive Sergeant if you want to. Next turn, knife juggler, Abusive Sergeant, get those two juggles out of the Haunted Creeper. I really like that, but we also see the Owl being top decked here by Ignite, so he could go for Silence. And looking at Nimsh's hand, I totally like the Owl here. Silence the Haunted Creeper traded away, you know it's a face hunter, you know there are those abusive sergeants, and you want to get maximum value out of your zombie chow. Nimsh, on the other hand, by facing a 2 minion board, could already think about an explosive trap here. If he does not want to go Haunted Creeper again. Well, Haunted Creeper is still nice. Maybe keeping that explosive trap for a masterful battle. Because the explosive trap is really valuable here in this matchup. The Paladin puts a lot of silver hand recruits on the board, has the master for battle, has all those cards, some some little minions here. Also, you can hit uh, you can hit the shielded mini bots with the explosive trap. So going for the haunted creeper is definitely okay here. You could also think about putting the abuse sergeant on the board, even though it's not too much value coming out of that. But you could maybe follow it up with with double knife juggler. Anyway, Nimsh decides to go for the explosive trap here. He wants to deny the early game pressure here by Ignite and he has to run into that. Will gift his two minions to Nimsh and then just res uh, resaturate the board with maybe a shielded minibot and a silver hand recruit if we see the coin coming out. Yep, 
I like the choice to play the coin here because you don't have any high cost cards in your hand. You just have next turn you maybe want to play the true silver champion. So there's no need to, to really keep the coin here. And Nimsh now goes for the knife juggler into Haunted Creeper, hits the Divine Shield of the Shielded Minibot. And Ignite could already think about, mm, you don't want to trigger the knife juggler. That's the thing. I was uh, thinking about Shielded Minibot running into the Haunted Creeper and then play your Consecration, but then I guess all your minions die. So Elder Peacekeeper is a very nice choice here. Just another minion on the board. You still have your Shielded Minibot. You have three minions now and uh, the Face Hunter just won. So I really like that. Unleash the Hounds being drawn for Nymph, though. He has five mana available. He could go for Knife Juggler Unleash. You always love to do that. You could still then two additional juggles with the Haunted Creeper. Put this apple on your head. But he goes for the Abusive Sergeant. Yeah, you can go for the Lucky Juggles. And now you have to hit the Shield Minibot with one of your juggles. The first juggle hits face and the second juggle hits the Shielded Minibot, taking it out. But now I'm pretty sure we're going to see the Consecration. That's that's nearly a no-brainer, yeah, and uh, that came out very quickly. Consecration here, clearing the board once more. Nimsh, on the other hand, can just resaturate it with Wolf Rider, and the game is very quick-paced here. So, Wolf Rider, steady shot, once again, Ignite's turn. He draws into equality. Well, that's not really helping him out here. He has to play the True Silver Champion, take another three damage, but heal up for two in the process. But Nimsh is also running out of steam a bit. He has a kill command, he has Unleashed the Hound, so Unleashed very nice to counter a masterful battle if you want to. And this turn drawing that Iron Big Owl just leaves him with his hero ability as it looks. Wow, the game is so fast. Ladies and gentlemen, take a seat because this is gonna be a very quick turn here. Silver End Recruit into Quartermaster. 2 3 3 is now on the board. And a second Unleash being drawn here for Nimsh. We have seen one Consecration, so you could also be a bit greedy here and go for double Unleash and Hero uh, hero Ability. That would be 8 damage to the face and you still have the Kill Command backing that up. You could also think about using your Iron Beak Owl to make one of those 3-3 uh, three, three Silver Hand Recruits a 1-1 one, one again. But here we go, Nimsh goes for the first Unleash, he goes for the second Unleash and then just swings to the face, will deal 8 damage to Ignite. We also see the steady shot come down here and I really like that choice. We have seen, as I already said, we have seen one Consecration being played already. So the chances of Ignite having a second Consecration by just having 18 cards now in his deck is pretty low. So you can definitely go for that and you're putting on so much pressure like that. And Ignite definitely facing lethal damage here. He has to, well, he is pinned against the wall. As we know, the Face Hunter can always draw into damage, but that Lay on Hands is a must play this this turn, Heali healing up for 8. You can also use your True Silver Champion for an additional heal up, and there's the Consecration! He takes one Hound off the board. He's now taking his time. You also want to keep up the pressure as the Paladin, because you, if you can go into race and another 10 damage to Nimsh's face is would be looking also very good but I guess you you want to play that safe so you take out additional hounds he swings does he swing to the face with the weapon no he takes out another hound so just two hounds left here for Nimsh who goes for another steady shot. Snake trap. And yeah, keeping the kill command is fine. You have the Iron Big Owl to still trigger it, so no need to play it here. 
The good thing for Ignite now is you can trade into that snake trap. You have seen it last game, I think so. Yeah, he knows it's a snake trap. That's that's the thing. He definitely knows that, and he could uh, think about a consecration this turn. Cockhammer put a taunt up with divine shield. Hits the three four. Uh, hits the three two. That's good. You wanted the taunt on the two four though, but it's it's still good. And then plays the knife juggler, putting on a lot of pressure. And now it's a bad spot here for Nimsh. A second iron begowl. Well, you can silence the taunt. You can take some pressure off the board, but Ignite is in a very nice position, though. He still has a masterful battle in his hand, still has the other Peacekeeper. Nimsh already goes for a kill command here this turn, so Ignite is dropping down to 7 HP, draws into Sylvanas. This is a very scary position for Ignite, because you don't know what you're facing. He does not know that Nimsh is holding a second Iron Big Owl. So, you really have to be careful what to do here. Let's calculate. Is there a way for him to deal lethal damage? You can swing for 4 to the face like that. Uh, 5, make it 11. And then you get 3 juggles. Let's say 1 hits the owl. So, that's 13. And then your board is already full, so you can't go for additional juggles. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't see a way here for Ignite to close it out. So he has to think about the safest option here mm. to, to close the game out. Mm, he hits the face. You can think about trading your Silverhand Recruit into the Owl, but we have already seen two Unleash the Hounds being played, so you don't need to play around that. You could just go for more minions on the board, as many as you want to and hope for the juggler to hit. Well, he treats his, he treats his, uh, he trades his uh, silver hand recruit into the Iron Big Owl. Will then go for the masterful battle. And yeah, like that, it's a three damage to the face. Yeah, he's one of lethal. He's one of lethal if he does it like that. Very nice play though. I have no time for games. Very well here. And now it all comes down to this draw. What is it? And it's a Wolf Rider. That's not enough here for Nimsh. And he says, well played. And we see the steady shot come out. So I guess this is surely going to be the concession here by Nimsh. And he shows the Iron Beak Owl. And Ignite is so relieved here to see that second owl come down. He knows he's not that. And Nimsh says, well fought, concede. And that's the second victory here for Ignite in a very nice series so far, going up against Face Hunter twice and winning it with Freeze Mage and with Paladin in some style, I would say. Very nice games and very well played here by Ignite. Unfortunately, really for him, one damage off lethal in that game. That feels so bad. You're like, you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot the whole game. And then, then you're sitting there, okay, okay, how much damage is this? Oh. It's, it's one of lethal. I'm down to 7 HP. The face hunter can always draw into... He can have Leroy Jenkins in his hand or draw into a, a second charger. So, yeah, I totally understand why Ignite was nervous there and is now very relieved to still have won that game. And with fur without further ado, we jump right into the third game of that match. And we see now the Druid of... Nimsh coming up against Ignite's Voria. Ignite just has one game to left here. Nimsh's starting hand is very high and we see Ignite is playing a mid-range Voria. Well, He's playing the, the Palo de Treros, so he has something to place on turn turn four. It's not it's not so full control. He also has Whirlwind to deal with some early game aggression. Uh, but uh, what's interesting here is Nimsh's hand. As a druid, no wild growth and just Dr. Boom in the scenarios. That's a very slow start for him here. At least he draws into a druid of a claw, so that's a turn five drop. He desperately needed one of them before turn 5 comes up. 
and Ignite already uses his coin, coins out his piloted shredder. I really like that choice. You can follow that up with your with your death spite. Nymph though draws into Shade of Nexramus. I expect him to place that here. Unfortunately for Ignite, you could already deal with that shade if you had played the Death Spite last turn. Well, you don't do that, but by the Death Rattle of the Death Spite and the Whirlwind, you could take out that shade. And we all know it's it's very hard for warriors to deal with those shades. It grows to a 3-3 now. Turn 5 is coming up. We might see the Druid of the Claw. But with the Death Spite now, because of attacking, Ignite has 5 damage available if you want to calculate it like that. And then you can still play your Cruel Taskmaster to really get rid of that Druid of the Claw. So he can easily deal with that even though he does not have a Shield Slam or an Execute. Druid of the Claw enters the board. Um, isn't there another way here for Ignite? It's, it's turn 5. Turn 5 as a warrior. You want to play your Sludge Belcher. Um, but you also want to deal with that Druid of the Claw. What now? Mm. I really like the Cruel Taskmaster play here. You could also think about keeping your weapon and make some use of of the whirlwind here. You could go whirlwind, attack with your shredder, then play the cruel taskmaster. Going for the sludge belcher here just doesn't feel right because it's it's gonna be taken out so easily. Going for well, Druid of the Claw just attacks hero ability. Then you just have the slime left. He's roping and now has to take his turn. Yeah, Cruel Taskmaster on the Pile of the Treader is also a way to do that. Sure. Uh, actually, I, I really miss that. That's the best play here for Ignite to, to do with that. He keeps his weapon. Now we see a Mind Control attack for Nimsh. Interesting. Swipe comes down on the ship, on the ship's cannon. And we will see a shapeshift clearing the cruel taskmaster as well. Execute is drawn for Ignite. He does not want to play Sylvanas this turn because the shade is gonna be a 5-5 and Sylvanas could easily be traded away with that. But yeah, it's turn 7 and it's Nib. And he told me, if Dr. Boom is green, you play Dr. Boom. That was what he told me on the first day when he was my co-caster. So, um, I really expect him to play Dr. Boom here. He also reveals the shade. And there you go. Dr. Boom enters the board. Dr. GG. We have the Death Spite available, though. So, if you want to face tank... That's five, that's six. Yeah, with the whirlwind you could clear the whole board. You could run your slime into the Dr. Boom. Also, with your weapon run into that, you take the shots of the Boom Bots to your face, can then play your Whirlwind if you want to, and yeah, even go for Savannas if you wanted to. But Ignite also has Dr. Boom in his hand, so you could go for a Counter Boom. You could just... well, but... You could also think about running your... not face tanking the damage here, Use your Execute, just run the slime into the Shade of Next Rama, swing with the weapon to the face, and, and then execute the... Uh, execute the Dr. Boom. Yeah, and that's what he wants to go for. He does not want to take so much damage because, yeah, there's also always the possibility for the Druid to deal a lot of damage with the combo, so he wants to play around that early on. Goes for Sylvanas. And Nimsh, on the other hand, he draws into Emperor Thorson. I really like that here. 
it contests Sylvanas so good. It's just a 5-5 five five and you deny value of that Sylvanas if your if your Thoris does not get traded away. And Ignite has several nice options here. Wow, even draws into uh, into Alexstrasza here. Ignite. Well, Yolo Rack is a nice option. You could go for that. 50-50, uh, put on more pressure. You also have Gromash in hand. If you go for... I really like Ragnaros here. You want to take out Emperor Thorison anyway, so... If it hits Emperor Thorison, you deal with that. If it hits face, you are setting up lethal by another 5 damage here from Savannah's coming in. And you're not facing lethal damage even if the combo comes down. And there we go, Ragnaros enters the board, the Fire Lord himself. And Sylvanas swings to the face, what does Ragnaros decide to hit? He takes out the Emperor Thorisan. But still, if Nimsh does not go for a taunt or some kind of heal, even a zero ability, we do have 15 damage next turn incoming with, with the Gromash and the Whirlwind in hand. So Nimsh being down to 15 HP facing that board is Sylvanas and Ragnaros. He has the big game hunter though. He has also the Keeper of the Grove to silence Sylvanas if you want to. There he goes, but he has to go for his hero ability. Please do not play that mind control tag. Please don't play that mind control tag. Oh no, Nimsh, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh god, that's lethal. Oh god, ladies and gentlemen, what a mistake. And Ignite sees it. Well, he sees the Gromish come down, the whirlwind. And Ignite closes this series out with a swing of 10 damage and 5 damage to Nimsh's face. Both players say GG, well played. And what a nice series here by Ignite again. A 3-0 here over Nimsh. Wow, I really enjoyed those games. He won with the Mage against the Face Hunter, with the Paladin against the Face Hunter, and then the unfavorable matchup for him as a warrior going up against the Druid. Good job. Very well played, Ignite. Really, I should think about being a fanboy of yours. And yeah, that leaves us with the conclusion. It was a 3-0 for Ignite in this group B of uh, the second group stage. And we will go into short break and then we we will... Okay, but the winner's match and the loser... Uh, are we going to show the winner's match? So uh, next up is the winner's match. The loser's match will be played off stream, as I just heard. So we take a short break, then we come back with the winner's match. So stay tuned and get ready.